Look at that, look at that truck. That's what we're working on today. We're working on that truck. That's right. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's your boy Dude with Dan, and today we got a bunch of cool stuff. And you know what I hate more than anything is when YouTubers tell you to like and share and, and favorite the video and all that crap before the video even takes place. Like, how are you supposed to know that this video is gonna be good? I would never ask you to like this video before you've seen it. However, at the end of this video, if you feel like you've enjoyed yourself, if you feel like you like it, please like it, share it, comment it, all that good stuff. Moving on, Dan, what are we doing today? Uh, we're working on the dual. Where we left off, I just swapped the dash and replaced all the fuses in the fuse box, and I still have a couple other stuff. I went ahead and ordered a new radio. I spent an absurd amount of money on it, as you guys can probably tell by the title. So we're gonna be installing that today. And I also ordered some new panels, like the glove box and some other stuff. Uh, and only one of them showed up and was right. We are gonna be putting in like my like $1,700 radio system. It's ridiculous. And we also have two more fuse boxes inside the cab that I decided that I'm gonna go ahead and replace all the fuses in those anyway as well because they look just like the shitty fuses that we replaced in the last video. So that's what we're going through today. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what we got. All right, so normally I'm, sh I'm funny about sharing the brand of stuff that I'm doing unless it's sponsored. This was not sponsored. I wanna make that clear that this, this, uh, this, this radio, which is, like, they cover, why'd they cover this with paper? Am I not, is it does not have these? Wouldn't that be fucked up if it didn't have these things? Because they, man. Oh, they probably got in trouble with all the, the copyright on the box or something. 12.1 inch radio, it's a Linkswell system, and I the only reason I'm telling you guys about this is because there's very little reviews on this radio on the internet. And there, there is a little bit more to installing something like this than meets the eye, so I'm gonna kinda go through some of that with you guys. Honestly, this radio is only about 1200, 1300 bucks. I say only because uh, compared to the $1,800 that I'm talking about, but there is almost a $400 adapter that I had to purchase along with it for my truck because it has the uh, the Bose audio system. So that's fucking awesome. I also got an extra, I, and since we're replacing fuses, I got a whole bunch more fuses on Amazon for way cheaper than you can buy them at Advanced or whatever. And uh, the lower glove compartment in black, because as you know, because uh, as you guys know, we're replacing the we replaced the entire dashboard, we're replacing the entire interior with black trim interior. And these are all the pieces over here that we've got pulled out that we're basically replacing. Or cleaning. That's There's gonna be a little bit of cleaning over here too. So that being said, I think uh, we need to just go ahead and get right into it. I think I'll go ahead and start with the radio, follow those instructions, and then go from there. So here is our factory single DIN radio touchscreen that comes factory with the truck and the DVD player as well, or CD player, whatever. Um, we will not be using either one of these, obviously. So we can basically put these to the side. I, I do believe that the Linkswell does not take CDs anymore, which is fine. Who fucking uses CDs? It's 2021. So we're gonna get rid of that. And let's look at our non-sponsored radio. I don't wanna mention the name, but it's inevitable because I am gonna be talking about it. I spent the fucking money on it, I'm gonna talk about it, all right? The necessary one. Fuck me, what am I getting into? Jesus Christ. Look at this kid. How many wire? Oh, this is gonna take all day. That's okay. We got some body trim panels that go on either side. All the stuff out the box. Throw the box. Oh. This is a uh, basically like an iPad style touch screen. Look at this bad boy. And one of the main reasons I got this is because not only does it just give me a big ass screen, it also relocates all the buttons, so I don't have to do that, which is really nice. It just compacts it all into one kit. I don't know if it was worth the unreasonable amounts of money that I spent on it. I've been saving for a little while, so I was like, fuck it, let's blow my wad. But I'll let you know at the end of the video, hopefully. If I can get it done. Okay. This gives me a uh, some pretty basic instructions. Maybe uh, maybe this won't be so miserable. All right. So first things first, the radio comes with several different adapters between IO3 through IO6. Don't know what that means. And there's also an IOB. So from what I can gather, the difference is pretty minimal. One of them has navigation or something, maybe. I don't know. I don't think my truck had navigation, so I'm gonna roll with the IO6. This is what I see everybody doing. And try that. Yeet. Now I have no idea if I have an IOB radio or an IO3, 4, 5, 6, um, and I can't tell what the difference is at this point in time. I hope to have a better answer for you later. So I'm just gonna follow the IO3 to IO6 because that's what I can find online. <laughs> Worst case scenario, the shit just don't work. Now the convenient part is that I still have the dashboard blown apart for this. I did that on purpose. 
I mean, I could have put things back together, but I knew that this radio involved taking apart a lot of stuff. So I figured it would just be easier if I kept it apart in the meantime. And I was right. So I think I figured out why this kit costs damn much money is because it essentially it creates its own systems off of there. The, a lot of R&D probably went into this because we have to disconnect a lot of different systems and basically reroute them to the radio. So it's like we're tricking the computer into thinking that it's a factory radio with all these piggyback wiring harnesses, which I have to say, I, I fucking respect. I like that. Would it be better if it was a plug and play system? Probably, but like the fact that someone put in the work to label all the cables, R&D every single plug, and tell you how to set it up. I mean, I got a lot of respect for kits like that. That's like some Holly performance stuff. Now let's, let's see if it works. Now from everything that I can find, it looks like that our first step is gonna be installing the backup camera cable, which we have a plug right here. Actually, we have a lot of plugs, I'm gonna make sure. So our first plug here is gonna be connecting from our reverse camera to a plug that's underneath our dashboard, which is fucking, I think, yep, right here. And unplug this cable that's tucked up here, right? So there's a little gray plug up here. We're just gonna unplug that. This is for our backup camera. Then we plug that into our new harness, like so. And now we gotta reroute this cable to the back of the radio. Now obviously the radio isn't installed yet, so I'm just gonna... We'll tuck all this before we put everything up and that's gonna be in the way of the vent, so I have to reroute that anyway. Here, yeah, yeah buddy, no buddy, no. All right, so that's in line with the other cables. Back of the backup camera, what's up? All right, so I am a little bit confused because I'm supposed to unplug both this green and black port on the this CDI box or whatever it's fucking called. These two guys right here, there's one. One unplugged right there. Two. Green and black. I know we're supposed to unplug these. I think we just use these two cables right here. USB line, and we're also left over with a spare USB port on this one as well. And this one, I just connected the USB to it because I think I was supposed to. Instructions are a little unclear. All right, so the green one right here is the set of front USB ports. The black is the rear. That's what I was told, and I don't know what that means. I'm gonna run these here yeah, cables up to the radio, just like mom used to make. Connect the green ones for the front. And then we pull the black one in now too. Those are for the rear. And uh, USB ports are connected and we're left with a uh, spare one over here that's for phone connecting and other stuff. So I'm probably just gonna leave this near the uh, glove compartment for right now. I believe this is USB 3 as well, so pretty quick. All right, so now we have a microphone for the communications, uh, voice and stuff. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it up here. That's where I see a lot of people put it. Uh, probably just run it up there since I have the headliner and the, the A pillar taken out right now anyway and the rest of the interior. It's gonna make it pretty easy. It's kind of the convenience of doing that. <laughs> But I'm just gonna run this along that and try to run this through the dashboard. Now I found a YouTube video that suggests putting the uh, the GPS antenna somewhere around here underneath this pa panel that goes back here that I still have off. So I think I'm just gonna put it put it where they had it and run it through the glove box. That'll sit like right there. I think that's a good spot. Drop her in here. Much better spot to drop that cable. Now, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure this cable runs to the back of the radio. Uh, I'm not actually plugging the radio in just yet, so you'll probably have to wait to that portion for me to get that part correct. But that's a good spot. I'm going to 3M that bitch right here, and that's where that GPS thing will stay. Tuck that cable right there. Money. Absolute money. All right, up next we have this T-harness. This T-harness basically splits off of your steering wheel. Normally this looks like a steering wheel. It does not right now. I already took it off in my last video. But unplug this bad boy here, connect the splitter on either side, then run the extra cable to the radio, and that does our steering wheel controls. Let's take this snip down. I might do this other one here because I'm feeling real froggy like, you know? Give us some slack, let's play with this. Let's play with some slack here. All right, take your T-harness, you know, do the things. This is Susan. 
Agency calling with the Vehicle Service Department. We are calling about your vehicle's manufacturer's warranty. We sent you several notices in the mail that you have yet to extend your warranty past the factory cutoff. And this is a courtesy call to renew your warranty before we close the file. If you are interested in renewing your auto warranty now, please press 5 now or press 9 to be removed from our list. Anyway, now we're going to plug her back in the back. Clock springs nice and tight. Yep. And it's going to take a little bit of going to take a little bit of f fucking around in here to get this thing to fit. But then we just run this to the back of our radio as well. Yee. All right, so next thing I got to do is pull pull these bad boys out. This uh this tuner box here. We'll just we'll unplug all these bad boys right now. That's out. All right, and then we're gonna pull this out. And I don't know if we dispose of that, but I'm gonna hold on to that. Okay, we got our main wire harness adapter. And I also see it's got some, some wires that are capped here, and they say different stuff. Let's see, we got 360 trigger, SWC one and two, and then we also have amp EN, which I believe is amp and gauge, probably a, a 12 volt wire that runs from the radio to turn the amp on. I'll probably end up stripping this wire and extending it so I don't have to take the radio back off again to add an amplifier to this. We should just be able to connect our connectors. We'll go green to green, gray to gray. And that's that for right now. And we also have uh, this thing. Not entirely sure what this is. Simple soft. I believe it's something to do with the, the can box. I'm not positive, I'm just following instructions here, y'all. Okay, this plugs in to the can box. This little thing, right? We also have something to do with the climate control uh, harness as well. And I know that this plugs into here because that's what the internet's telling me to do. It doesn't really come with good instructions, but I'll link a good installation video, one that I followed along pretty good if you guys are doing this exact radio. If you guys don't care and you just hear from my voice, keep on keeping on, fuckface. And then that goes from the HVAC right here, which the plugs, while well, the ones on the radio are identified, or the adapters really, the ones on the truck aren't, but they're all different. I think it's pretty much impossible to fuck these up. Our two USBs, a microphone, and our backup camera. I didn't put the GPS up to the radio. All right, so now I'm about to install this adapter. This $350 adapter. I really want to open it up and see what kind of adapter this is, but it actually looks like some some genuine some genuine shit here. So I, for the sake of congruity, am going to use a little Velcro. A little bit of double-sided Velcro. We don't want this bitch to move around. We're gonna put this right where the uh, where that box was earlier that we don't need. Here's the adapter cable that goes with it. And I'm gonna Velcro the uh, the adapter for the Bose audio system, which this radio won't work if you don't have a Bose audio system, or or it will, but you need to you need the adapter if you want to maintain a lot of factory settings, something like that. But since I have that, I'm gonna put it right here on top of this this plate where the uh, the tuner box is located. We'll just. Put you way back in there. Look at, look at you, like a good little tuner box. And we'll just connect that. Connect that. And then this, I believe, plugs into the radio adapter up here. That was initially plugged in the back. And boom, that's plugged in. The box is plugged in. Then that's plugged into our main harness. Okay, we're, we're getting close to the end of our journey here, but the, one of the last things we need to do is we have the uh, this is the back of the CD player where it normally plugs in. I don't need the CD player and I'm not using the CD player and nor can you use it with this radio. So we have a little uh, jumper box thing right here. This plugs into where the back of the CD player was. Actually, it looks like this is a plug for the CD player system and I don't have a CD player. I have a DVD player. So that's not gonna work. So I guess what I'm gonna do is just kind of tuck all them, well, <laughs> tuck all these wires that go to the DVD player back in here. And I do know that there's a bunch of extra wires that run through the uh, headliner because that's what all these do. I'm deleting that rear DVD player anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. I know a lot of people are upset that that feature's gone for them, but I'm deleting the DVD player anyway, not a big deal. I'm just gonna tuck all them wires back. Tuck, tuck all them wires back in there. Tuck all them wires back. So now it would be time to start plugging in the radio and give it a test fire, but as you can see, there's some aspects of this that are not complete. 
right. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and finish assembling most of the dashboard, uh, the display, the vents, stuff like that. Get those nice and cleaned up so we can pop everything back in here. I want to be able to test it, but in order to do that, I think I need to kind of put some stuff back together. So uh, while I have everything apart anyway, I'd like to go ahead and clean out the fuse panels on either side. Pretty simple, you just pop out these clips like this. There go, that's one. That's two. And I think you just pull this back. One on the top, one on the side. And there's one more big old plug back here. All right. Now we gotta strip and clean all of these. All right, we're gonna go grab the other one and we'll do that too. So I think the last thing I have to do before I start plugging everything up is I've just run my Wi-Fi antenna. It's just this, the Gen 4s and the Gen 3s are a little bit different and mine has this little flat 3M sticky Wi-Fi antenna. And I'm just gonna put it up there behind the headliner. Seems like a good spot to do it. Gonna run underneath the dashboard here and then out through here. And I'm pretty sure that's the last bit of the stuff that I need to plug in to the truck before I plug in the radio. Oh, I installed, um, I also installed all the fuse panels on both sides. There's another one over there. And I installed the fuse panel up underneath the dash. So, so every single fuse in this truck has absolutely been replaced. Every single fuse. So now I gotta put this radio in, which is right there. There is also this thing, which is a GPS speaker, specifically for GPS. I'll be honest, man, I think this thing kinda looks like shit, and I don't really wanna put it in here just yet. I might actually, since I'm going to build a center console that goes through the whole thing, I might just kind of tuck it up underneath here for right now, just in case I might want it, but I'm going to use GPS on my phone, so. Alright, I have, I'm not going to peel this off just yet, but I have everything 
for the most part plugged up. I, I just have the thing rested in here right now. But it should work. I have feelings that it probably won't because of who I am as a person. But uh, that is, that's never stopped me before. So what I'm gonna do is reconnect the battery and we're gonna test and see if this thing explodes or not. I know this is supposed to take a while. Okay. Okay. It's not a it's not a Chevy, but okay. Let this baby boot for a little bit. It knows that my doors are open. Bluetooth, is that it? How do I connect my fucking phone? Why is it not coming through? All right, you know what? There was a lot of reasons that I thought this radio wasn't gonna work. And uh, I tried fixing all of them. I gave it my best shot. It's like a $1,300 radio with an adapter and it's not fucking working. So I'm gonna pull it out and just not fuck with it. I think I might just go with a different radio. Like a, a lot of people told me a lot of things about this radio and I think I should have listened. But you know what? Sometimes you live and you learn. And uh, that was a, almost a $2,000 mistake, but I'm gonna see if I can send that radio back, which I should be able to, because it don't work, and then move on from there. Now, since my radio doesn't work, I think now's a good time to start figuring out the rear seat situation, because uh, we have two captain's chairs that I'm converting this to. Instead of keeping it <clears throat> a bench seat like most trucks, I'm gonna do two rear captain's chairs. So I'm gonna grab one. That's interesting. It's like this, uh, the second thing. I mean, I'll move that, obviously. It's like, that's where that locks. I'm also probably gonna have to delete that. The problem is that fucking kills all the leg room. You know, that does, it does create issues for how little leg room there is. I might have to tilt the seats in the rear. about doing this shit because I don't want to do it. Okay, the right part. Yeah, but now that I'm fucking in it, So here's the problem, not the problem, uh, the solution that I'm running into. So now I'm getting ready to mount the rear seats. Uh, we're, going away, we're going away from a bench seat, we're going to captain's chairs, which is pretty cool. The problem is captain's chairs don't really fucking fit in here, so I have to make that work. Um, now naturally, the, uh, the body lines and the seat mount up. You see this like gap here? 
th these actually pretty mount up pretty close. I would say within an inch or so of it being like the perfect shape for everything. Uh, the reason why it's different is because these seats are for a Tahoe, right? The rear seats are for a Tahoe that I'm having put same year. I had them reupholstered and we're putting them in here. So right now I just have this temporary spacer. It's like a, it's just a piece of square stock, which is probably what I'm going to end up using to mount the seat too. But if I if I lay this down all the way, the back of the seat hits the wall. So <laughs> so if I remove this, it sits down, but it pushes out like another another couple of inches, and then that's just more legroom that you lose, which is very important here. I don't know if this appears like a lot of legroom. It doesn't look like a lot of a legroom, but it's more than enough. You know what I'm saying? So my goal is, or what I'm gonna have to do is, I just cut out the uh, the mounts for the previous seat and the seat belt, but I have to weld up a uh, like a mount for the seat to fit in here. And I think that this square stock is like the perfect, this two by four square stock is like the perfect size and height and stability. It's like strong too. So I think what I'm gonna do is pull the seat out, take this, cut it out to the right length. I got a, I got a long piece that I can cut to length and then I'm gonna cap it at this end, make it flush here, like make it from flush to here to here, weld it along the actual floor down here, which you guys probably can't see because of the lighting and then basically uh, then mount some screw holes, then mount some bolts here for this to cinch down to, and we'll have a rear seat. Now it's not gonna look, it's not gonna look factory, right? So I think what I'll probably have to do is either using some wood or some fiberglass or something, create like a little fit panel, a little fill panel that covers this, which will be fine. Um, maybe just like a piece of wood or something that covers this, bolts up to it, makes it look really cool, or maybe some lights, you know? I'll have to accent this shit to make it not look like this. But I think that is gonna be the best bet, is uh, square tubing. I'll just come out to here so I can extend it, drill a hole through it, mount it. And uh, yeah, it's actually, it's actually a little bit more simple than I thought it was gonna be. So let's do some measuring and let's do some cutting. Ta-da! All right, so now we got the length that we need. What's the next step? Well, this fits really good in the back of this, this L-shaped corner here. The only problem that I have is that this edge tends to drop off and we don't need this bolt here, nothing like that. So what I think I'll probably do is I'll take some of my steel and create a filler plate that connects from here to here to here and then just kind of fills this area here. So I think I'll take some cardboard, draw out what I need and then match it in cardboard and then that's all, that'll be our end plate. Check this fitment out. Here's that little plate that I cut. You know, just eyeballing it, like do what Dan do. Oh, fuck me, right? Look at this. We're gonna having that uh, tape, having that bench grinder really does help too. By the way, but we got a very solid flush, flush fitment all the way around that corner, and uh, it is a little overcut, but I think that'll be just fine. Got my welder out, 
I'm gonna tack it up, pull the thing out, and then uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna contour these edges before I tack it though. Now we got a nice little gap to fill. Uh, normally I probably wouldn't go through something that much work, right? But this is gonna hold the seat in place, and we want to make sure that that doesn't go anywhere. You feel me, dog? So I'm gonna tack. Since it's in this groove here, I'm gonna kind of tack two little, two or three little spots, get it out, make sure I'm happy with it, and then finish my welds. There's a lot of wires in here, and even though that we're just tacking, I want to make sure I don't fuck them up. So I've got my little fiberglass blanket here. Yeah, let's run some good power. Let's run some good power now. We got the weld all set up here now. I don't know. I'm talking like that. Uh, we're gonna weld it. That sits in there really good. Uh, the fitment's still good. I think I'm gonna take this to the table and go ahead and finish up the welds top and bottom. Check the fit one more good time, and then we'll uh, pop her in here. We'll weld it in here. Well, I'll probably do like a handful of beads along the way. Nothing, nothing crazy. Doesn't need to be. I really need a metalworking table, like something bad. You wanna send me one email? So we got this thing, sits in there, real, real good fitment along there, along the back. I mean, that looks really good. That sits right there, lines up with the thing. Let's see how our sits, let's see how, <laughs> let's see how our sits seat on it. Or our seats sit on it. All right, so this has actually worked out a little bit better than I thought. Um, I've gained a little bit more room in the back with the height of everything and then this looks really good I'm very happy with the location and the height all that good stuff. It's made out of pretty thick steel I'm not worried about that ever ripping out or being a problem um, However, it's actually worked out so well that now the holes aren't gonna be on the surface So I think what I'm gonna do is because we still have a little bit of an angle here I'm gonna weld a uh, kind of like a spoiler of a plate kind of like a little bit of a degree That'll be where it mounts to flush and I'll do it on the I'll do it along the whole back side of it and I think that'll work great. Actually, I think that'll work really good. All right, so you might notice a difference in quality because I actually picked up a GoPro. I really kind of hate GoPros. I've been kind of fighting myself getting another one for the past couple of years. Uh, for the longest time, I used these little Sonys, these little Sony action cameras, but I did this thing the other day with, uh, with Justin and Killboy. No, I found out how good the GoPro Hero 9s are, and I was like, bro, I gotta get one. So right now, um, I've got my piece, my adapter piece for the truck for the rear seats uh, right there. It's cooling off because I just got done welding on it. And I figured since I got some time, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do my best to put most of the dashboard back together. There's like this, the uh, four wheel drive controls and the air vents. I ended up buying a whole new set of air vents because the air vents that I was, uh, that came in the truck originally had so much crap in them. They had so much crap in them. I let them sit in here for for literally for like several days in like bleach and all sorts of like degreaser and stuff and I cannot get the little bit of dirt that's left in them out. There's like so much dirt and all of these vents that I just can't get out. And I could break them all apart, but a new set of vents online was like 80 bucks and I was like, oh, fuck yeah. Easy question. And, uh, and as of right now, the stereo still doesn't work. I have a buddy of mine who does like audio equipment and stuff as like a profession that I'm gonna have come and take a look at it. He seems to think that the factory amp is not turning on, which I mean, it sounds right. That sounds 100% right. But I'm a little bit above my pay grade on this one. So I'm gonna see if, uh, I'm gonna see if he can figure it out. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna kind of put together the uh, truck. I was also waiting on a couple of pieces like the, uh, the shroud in black, which I got. Ugh. That just kind of goes in over this, like so. Look at that. All right, that's a that's very nice, very nice indeed. We've got the four wheel drive controls, and the air vents that go into here, which I'm gonna install those real quick. All right, I got the vents in and the four wheel drive controls, which this knob fell off. Really cool. Um, I'll have to probably get a new knob, but. 
uh, vents are in, got the vents in on the center that you can't see because the GoPro's not good at light. And then there's also the vent and stuff over here, right here. Which means the last thing we got to do is install this base plate that, or the kick plate that goes underneath where the steering wheel goes. And here's the OEM one in purple, the new one in black. Uh, there is a hole drilled here for the tuner switch. So I'm just going to basically transfer that. All right, so I got the spots where I need this to be marked out there and there. I have my mounting bolt holes and I've got some grade eight bolts that I found that I think are gonna work good. They're actually a little bit, these things are huge. Probably don't look like it on the screen, but I mean, these are some big fucking bolts, bro. I'm probably gonna sever them around here or so, and then, then sleeve them and have them come through here like that. All right, as you guys know, I'm making room for my plasma cutting table, uh, which is uh, coming very soon, a lot sooner than I thought. But you know, I made this like cool ass bench for Justin. It's been sitting here since I made the video. Um, I need to take that to his shop. I need to start making room for the table, which means I gotta move that, which means that I gotta move this. But the battery was like dead, like dead, dead. Both of them, I don't know how. But uh, we're gonna see if she'll, if she'll crank now. I've had the, the charger on there for a second. Come on, baby. Ah, oh, it wants to. Mildly concerning, dead ass battery. All right, it's a different day. I dropped off all that stuff yesterday. You know, the, uh, what's it called? Um, swinging chair I made for Justin. I dropped it off yesterday, and then by the time I got done, uh, my buddy texted me, he was like, hey brother, come get your tailgate. Your tailgate's done. So I got the tailgate done for the dually. That's right here, transported it. Look how good that is, that's beautiful. I bought this tailgate from some dude in uh, like not Peachtree City, kind of kind of that area. Yeah, yeah, you know you know where Rick Ross's house is, like that big mansion, that big ass mansion. It was like five minutes down the road, and uh, so I bought that tailgate. It was a black tailgate and it had a bunch of dents in it. And then my buddy Robbie uh, Owen's father, he painted it for me and made it look absolutely amazing. I can't believe how good this looks. They knocked out all those dents, sanded it. I mean that's, I mean it probably wasn't a salvageable tailgate, but they did it for me because they love me. But while out and about yesterday, it was raining all day, and I don't really drive this truck very much in the rain because it's an old truck. And uh, found, we definitely have a leak over here. I mean, that's nasty looking. Um, I'm not positive, although I have some good theories. If I had to guess, it's this cable right here that I've cut a hole open to. Yeah, that's probably what it is. The water's running down in that in that port there that you guys can't fucking see because it's a GoPro. But I, I cut the little boot here to let this cable in. I think water's just been leaking. You can see water in there. Well, that's fucking stupid on my part. So I'm gonna fix that real quick while I wait. Um, thinking to yourself, what are you waiting for? The uh, air, air conditioner guys are on the way now. They're going to uh, fix my air conditioner. It's been broken for months. So I'm gonna kind of like see if I can fix that leak on that truck. We're probably gonna call it good for this truck today, seeing how we got everything that we need for it. I have my, my electrician buddy, he's gonna come here pretty soon and knock out all the electrical stuff that's in this box. Hey, why is that light out? That light shouldn't be out. Or did they just not replace it? They might not have replaced it. Um, but there's a bunch of wires in here that are run through like electrically through this pillar. Uh, there's like an outlet or two and then an LED light inside. That all needs to be ripped out. So I'm gonna have my buddy take that out. Cause I gotta get rid of that box. I gotta make room for the CNC plasma cutter, am I right? So I think I'm gonna fix this leak real quick. Well, I got time. I'm gonna let the air dry it out. Can't have my truck leaking. I, I can't have it leaking. I know you guys clicked on this video for the dually, but now we're looking at this mini truck, right? It looks like, yeah, that's exactly what I'd, I'd done here, is that I basically allowed water to build up because of the uh, that hole in here. I might just fill the bitch full of silicone, we'll see. But I'm gonna let it dry for a good bit. I, found, I did find a couple of pennies and uh, bobby pins, so if you need to go crack some safes in Fallout, I'm set. And uh, a toothpick still in the wrapper. 
Very interesting, Batman. That's right. Truck's inside right now. So it's been raining for like two weeks, and as you guys know, I found a leak in the truck, and I've been fixing it. Uh, I did not fix it, I ordered new boots. What ended up happening is that the uh, the wire that I installed for the sub, uh, sub wire that I installed, um, I just cut through grommet thinking it would be okay, and then like I'm, of course it wasn't because it's me. So right now I have my, uh, my dehumidifier from upstairs in the truck cleaning out the jute padding. And honestly, I ran this bitch all night and it's like 95% done. Like the, the jute is nice and dry and it doesn't stink in here. I also sprayed everything with rubbing alcohol like the day before to keep mildew at bay. Um, and thankfully it doesn't look like there's any rust and all the, all the humidity underneath here is, is, is nice and dry now. Um, like I said, just a little, just a very little dampness now. Getting ready to do that. Getting ready to uh, finish that up. So I'm about to turn this thing back on. Bro, it's so dry in there, it like hurts my lips. Also, if you're wondering why the truck's in here is because the Corvette's being wrapped and this thing leaks and it's been raining, like I said, for a week. So there's a lot of reasons why it gets inside treatment right now because it can't be outside. I'm not joking when I say that this is my favorite vehicle that I own, right? But like in the beginning of the video, I talked about my sponsorship for today's video, which is by uh, PB Blaster. This stuff just came out, I believe, which does come in this aerosol can, or if you want to use it with an air gun, you can. It protects from corrosion and rust for up to two years, and it doesn't move. So whatever you want to spray it on, anything, and it will protect corrosion and rust for two years. And I, and I do mean literally everything. Uh, I think it's a great fit for the end of this video because my truck is leaking and I don't want it to rust. So I'm basically going to spray this shit on like everything real quick. So first of all, you might be able to tell a little bit, but I just sprayed the hinges with that white lithium grease that they make. There's a couple of spots down here that I don't want to rust. And you can spray it on wires and everything. It just, whatever you want, that'll protect it for, for two years, baby. Let me get underneath that hood, baby. I keep them hinges. Keep that shit from rusting. All right, that's good. Uh, toe hitch. I want to douse that bitch. Don't want that to rust. And there's a spot where their air conditioner drops on the frame that I also want to protect. And this stuff is absolutely good stuff. It's the same company who makes PB Blaster and all of their accompanying products. I mean, they're awesome. I've been working with them for some time. They've been really nice to me. They support me. They love me. And in turn, they love and support you guys back. So thank you, PB Blaster, for sponsoring today's video with Surface Shield. We appreciate it here at the Dickhead community. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, we'll get back to working on the dually and moto vlogging and the ambulance and motorcycle builds and the Mustang and the Camaro in the Corvette. Yeah. <laughs>